Uh, good evening, everyone. Tony Gonzalez, Chair of the Planning Board, calling together tonight's Planning Board meeting for December 5th, 2023. First, a quick opening statement. This meeting is we all. Oh, are we, is this going to affect the real time public participation? No, it will not. Okay. Um, this meeting allows for real time public part participation comments can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the zoom virtual meeting software for remote access this application allows users to view the meeting and send comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function submitted text comments will be read into the record for those of you joining by phone press star nine if you want to ask a question please raise your hand a copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages all votes will be done via roll call to ensure out account accuracy so we'll start with um, roll call. Marty Kroll? Here. Larry Hassan? Here. James Sweeney? Here. Yolanda Spinola? Here. Tony Gonzalez, present. Deputy Chief Williams is not going to be in attendance tonight. Um, also, as far as the agenda, the first one on the docket is property 137 and 141, 147 Main Street. The second one is 609 and 627 Pleasant Street. If you're here for Teen Talons, 1315 Main Street, that has been continued. Okay, now can we first get uh, acceptance for a call to accept the minutes from last month's meeting? Motion to accept, no. go ahead, Larry. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Roll call. Marty Kroll? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Yolanda Spinola? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, do we start with the return of surety, Evan? Uh, yeah, we'll do that first. Um, again, this is pretty simple, just like a lot release. Uh, 728 and 744 North Cary Street, they had to give a cash surety to the city to uh, guarantee some work they were gonna do. Uh, conservation wise, it was to be returned contingent on receiving a order of conditions from the conservation commission, which they received last month. So they're good. All right, is there a motion? Motion to grant. Second. Second. All right, roll call, Marty Kral. Oh, yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Amanda Spinola. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right. Next up, uh, Representative J.K. Holmgren Engineering for 137 through 141, 147 Main Street. I'm moving Scott over. And I'm moving Mark over. And Evan, if you could keep track of that, I'm bouncing back and forth to try to get the live stream to start working. Yeah, I'm not sure if you made me a co-host or not, because I can't seem to do anything right now. Oh, I have not. I will do that now. Yeah. Are we all? Uh, hi, good evening. Um, just one, one second. And um, is Road taking the minutes for this meeting? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Scott. Mark. Good evening, Madam Chair. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm here with Mark from Dakota Partners, who's uh, the applicant for 137 Main Street. So I think I'll just turn things over to him, if I may, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mark Ford. I'm with the Dakota Partners. We're the uh, new developers that have taken over the project from the previous developer. Um, I'm here because there's a couple of things I need to amend from the previous design, um, which is really more so geared towards the conditions that were outlined for the previous design. Uh, for most part, the conditions that I, I needed to change, um, or the, there was three of them all together. One was the applicant 
shall have two years to begin construction on the development. Um, I request for a three year. Um, Dakota Partners does affordable housing developments. And in doing so, the application periods for that um, go on for more than two years before I can start construction. Mm -hmm. For me not to come back next in, in a couple of years and ask for an extension, I just felt it would be pertinent to ask for it now. Um, the next one that came up, the, an older condition that needed to be modified, is that this is uh, the previous one is all market rate. Uh, we Dakota Partners uh, do mostly affordable housing uh, and workforce type housing. This project is very unique in the sense that. We are doing a mixture, a blend. It is the floors two through four will be the affordable housing component. And then the top floor will be a for sale condos. So there'll be homeowners uh, purchasing the top unit on the building. So that is the other condition that needed to be amended. Uh, the third one talks about the parking uh, coming back later on for 50 spaces, minimum 50 spaces for the tenants. The, the design as it stands today, which uh, is on the screen, uh, has 50 spaces. Those spaces, uh, with the people buying the <coughs> 27 units, they'll have, they'll have 20, a minimum of 27 parking spaces. The balance will be then dispersed out through the balance of the uh, affordable, the uh, office people, as well as the commercial component. I've also spoken and met with the, the uh, Brockton Parking Authority and got a letter from them, which uh, they've already designated spaces for us in the future that we could uh, rent out for additional parking. So I think I've covered all that um, in that respect. The, the last thing as part of the amendment was to work with the planning department, with Rob and his team on the exterior of the building. And uh, because of the previous design to this one, the, the really the thing that changed was the exterior envelope of the building. Footprints stayed the same. The units inside, the number of units changed and the type of unit changed inside. But from an envelope standpoint, uh, it, it, we worked with Rob and our architects with him to come up with a design that we feel is uh, pretty attractive at the end of the day. Uh, I'd be more than happy to share that with you if you like, if you have any questions, so I'd be more happy to answer those as well. Um, I'm sorry, the, ex the the first one, you said you needed an extension for what? I was trying to... It was to, uh, you had in there previously, the applicant shall have two years to begin construction on the, of the, the, the development. Um, when I go through tax credit uh, applications, um, I have a tax credit application that I'm looking to get into this February. Um, traditionally in the state of Massachusetts, you're not awarded the first time you go in. You usually, in the second go around, you be awarded. So that would make me come back next year uh, in 2025, January 2025, apply, and then be awarded probably in the spring of 2025. And then I would have to go into the closing mode. And I would it would take six months, but traditionally it takes nine months. So you're looking at 2026 of March to get the thing closed, and then I'll start construction immediately. So what um, is the exact time frame you're looking for an additional two years? I, I'm just saying right now you had it as uh, two years. I'm saying if we can make One. it three, we should be able to cover it. Did I say, did I hear four? Change it from two to four? Two I to said, three. Oh, two to three. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then the parking went from 50 to 27, but you have um, parking spaces from the parking authority? Yes. I, the building itself, underneath our building, we have 50 spaces already. Um, and with the number of units that I have for the project, uh, I don't, you know, the, the parking authority has already designated another 49 off site if I need them. I won't need them all, but uh, I do have that. Oh, wow. There's a total reduction in number of units, and therefore the number of spaces required should also Re decrease to match. That is correct. They did decrease. You're absolutely correct. From 99, I think, uh, was a previous approved correct. project. So that it is went, Right. It went from 99 units, and now we're at 83 units. That is correct. 
it's it's required 83 but you have 50 and then you have 40 more from the parking commission correct 49 49 49 okay yep. um and then ex you have ex the fourth and final one is exterior changes to the building and the exterior changes um change the apartment sizes i heard i changed the apartment size because going through a lie tech program for, for the city of students there's certain size requirements that are required uh, for that and for the four sale units on top that's going through a program through a mass housing called a Commonwealth Builder. It's for first time home buyers. And they have a, a certain size that we, they want us to meet as well. So a lot of that change in the interior of layouts, but not the footprint of the building. Footprint stays the same. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, questions from other board members? Uh, Madam Chair, I think he was going to show us that rendering. So I, I would like to see it. Absolutely. I'll stop. I'll stop sharing. Back. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is the uh, the new rendering of the the building. Uh, the parking between the building still exists. Um, we have the up lighting on the building in these locations here. Uh, the focus on the corner is the commercial, uh, like a cafe area. And then um, this is parking, you know, screen for the parking. And these are all the apartments above. Our commercial space is on that corner. We'll have our main entry here. And then along this area here is our uh, community uh, space, our gym. So it animates the street along the edge. Madam Chair, um, just have a question on what it looks like from the other angle and how much space there is between the uh, um, the old uh, neighborhood health center and this building here. I don't know how much how much space is there there. I don't have a view from that end, but the 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 footprint didn't change in the sense of the, the location. So what was previously there? Oh, okay, was, it's still it the same. Yeah, yeah it hasn't changed. The whole goal was not to change the ground level in the sense of the footprint, but change what's internal to it above. Okay. Uh, so Mark, there's a anonymous an attendee who said that there's no there's no longer three bedrooms. Um, is that accurate? No, that is not. That is not accurate. Mm. Um, I can. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Number mm. standpoint, I have on each floor. If you, can you see my spreadsheet here? Um, no, you need to stop sharing and reshare. Okay, I apologize for that. Stop. No worries. The, I can just give a quick rundown while he looks for that, Madam Chair. The previous plan had 40 studios. This current plan has zero. The previous plan had 44 one bedrooms. We now have 34 ones. Previous plan had 15 twos. We now have 43 twos. Previous plan had no three bedrooms. We now have six. So it's 34 ones, 43 twos, and six three bedrooms for the total of 83. It, 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 that's changed slightly, uh, Scott, uh, from the internal. I had to make some modifications because I wanted to get more two bedrooms on the for sale component. There you go. So mm -hmm. I had a slight change in, in the internal ones. And uh, I can show you those plans or what I did with that because it, it's kind of it's kind of nice because some of the for sale units are two stories. They go down to the fourth floor. And come up to the uh, fifth floor. Um, but as it stands for the affordables on floors two, three, and four, uh, one bedroom units, I have five on each floor with a total of 15. Two bedroom units, I have 13, 13, and nine, a total of 35. Three bedrooms, I have two on each floor, a total of six, for a, a grand total of 56 total um, units for wow. the, the light tech. Thank you. Any other board members, <clears throat> yes. I, I do want to point out that this is the first um, for sale project that we've had in the city in a long time, um, especially in downtown. And it's great to see that. Yes, absolutely. Any question? Any other questions from the board members? Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, I do have another one. Yep, go ahead, Jim. Oh, th uh, thanks, Larry. Are there any restrictions to any other are there buffer zones or anything with, with this change to the other lots? 
uh, there's it's again it's the same footprint. I am speaking with uh, the city council and stuff because of air rights and respect to the side of the building. Because uh, when you get into the when you get into the building codes later on, the size of the windows will change depending how close you are to the property line. See, in the previous developer that went through and got approval, they were just looking to flip the property. Somebody else, let them deal with it. Uh, I'm in the process of dealing with it now. Um, and, and it doesn't change anything. The parking lot's still going to be a parking lot adjacent to us. I'm not, you know, looking to do anything with that at all. Okay. All right, go all ahead. Right, thank you. Larry. Welcome. Yeah, um, so I do like the idea of now there's going to be some actual home ownership in the building to individual home ownership. Is it possible? I don't want to take up too much time, but to at least see a design plan of some, like a townhouse unit, just curious to see what it looks like if you could. Yeah, yeah, that's Thank not you. a problem. Let me Thank just, you. Uh, slip back I don't have it. any other questions, just a quick look and all set. Yeah. Let me just get sure I get the right floor for you. I don't, I hate going back and forth. And they're all single level units, they're not townhouse. Is that correct? Uh, not all of them. Uh, what we had to do to get more two ah. uh, that's why I made a slight change on the, the, the lie tech down below for the number of twos. Um, I incorporated the two story uh, units. So this is the, the fifth floor here. Ah, uh, I see them. So you have these units right here along the side. They're all two bedroom units, but they're two story hot, tall. They'll have an internal stair. That'll bring you down to the lower uh, bedroom areas down below. So you basically have two bedrooms here on the corners, one bedroom. These are all twos through here, and then another two bedroom in the corner here and throughout. That's very nice. So if I go to a, a lower floor, the fourth floor, this is the fourth floor. They come down the stairs here, and you come to two bedrooms and a full bath downstairs on this level here for those. Okay, thank you. So just another quick question. So um, you we're entering the main floor, we're entering and then the, it's actually like a, a basement in the unit, but with it, the second level is correct. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I missed that question. Does that make sense to you? You know what I mean? So if I enter through the main door of the unit, the two story yep. ones, the two level ones. You the, go down. We're going to go downstairs to get to the, to the bedrooms. Right. To the okay. Bedroom. Yep. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. I, I like it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Any Anything else, sir? Any other questions um, from board members? Yeah, Madam Chair, I just had a quick question about the community room. Is that a amenity that's only available to the residents, or is that going to be something that is like a, you know, something that might be available to? folks who might want meetings in the city or something? Is that like a more public amenity? Uh, we do have like a, yeah, I would love to learn. For people living here, uh, like the fourth sale units will have access to it. Um, and the fourth sale units all have uh, their own laundry in that space. When you get down to the ground level, sorry to jump through it quickly. When you get down to the ground level from an amenity standpoint, you'll have a, a community space here that they can utilize with a kitchen area. So if they have birthday parties or uh, graduation parties or something, you can do it there. Uh, there's a gym in the area as well. Uh, you got leasing offices, a package room, mail room area. But this is all for the, the residents of the building uh, for their use, not for outside use at the end of the day. All right, thank uh, you very much. Thank you for that. Thank Ready you. to open up for public comment? Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to make a comment on this project, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. Uh, once you raise your hand, we'll be able to recognize you and move you into uh, the conversation. And at this time, we do not see anyone with their hands raised. All right, thank you. Close that section. Is there a motion? Motion to uh, motion. Approve. Go ahead, Larry. Motion to approve. All right, a second. second. All right, roll call. Marty Crow? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rhonda Spinola? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, I guess you're not going anywhere, are you? Next up. I am not. 
I'm staying with you, Madam Chair. Site plan Mark, review. have a good night. Thank you. Bye now. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank uh, you, Mark. Property 609 and 627 Pleasant Street. Scott is representing site plan review. Oops, hang on. Scott just dropped down. Uh, we promote him to panelist. Sorry about that, Scott. Oh, hi, Scott. You're back. Good. All right. I'm back. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, I believe I should also have Kevin Patton from BKA, Rob, perhaps. Oh, there's Kevin. Let okay. me move him forward. I can get started while we wait for Kevin, Madam Chair. Uh, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Ace Dental. And Ace Dental has a piece of property uh, that really has been kicking around both the ZBA and the planning board for years now at 609 and 627 Pleasant Street, right at the corner of Pennsylvania Ave. I'm gonna share my screen so I can show you folks. You'll notice I'm doing pretty good with that, Madam Chair. Yes, great. Gold star. Don't jinx it. That's two for two. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, 609, 627, the old uh, Nezrella real estate building, I believe, uh, right at the corner of Pleasant and Pennsylvania Ave. Uh, Dr. Malik is uh, from Ace Dental. Dr. Malik currently has his existing dental practice on this side of Pennsylvania Ave at, uh, at 599, I believe it is, or 601 uh, Pleasant Street. He's looking to move his practice and build a, a 14,400 square foot building uh, right here, one level building. Next to it, right at the corner of Pleasant and Pennsylvania Ave, a 5,400 square foot building. Uh, the biggest difference between this and all the other proposals that have been kicking around for years, this is by right. Uh, it's properly zoned uh, in the, the C5 commercial zone. So this is a, an allowed use in the, uh, in the commercial zone. So we did not need ZBA approval for the use, though we did file with ZBA uh, Madam Chair, for a uh, a variance from the zoning bylaw that says you can't have any uh, any work done within a hundred feet of DW Field Park uh, due to buffering issues. So we received a variance from the ZBA uh, along with that in the the park department's comments of some uh, some heavy screening around the uh, the driveway for DW Field Park, which we have shown on the on the western side of our property. Uh, so as I said, we've got a, a 14,000 square foot building, a uh, roughly 5,500 square foot building, uh, shared parking uh, for, both, uh, for both sites. There's 64 spaces provided, uh, a lot of landscaping. We've gone through a, a couple of uh, technical review meetings uh, with the planning board and uh, the planning department and department heads, uh, a considerable amount of landscaping buffering the, the surrounding residential neighborhood on Pennsylvania Ave, uh, on-site drainage uh, proposed to handle all of the uh, runoff from the proposed impervious surface. We have two drainage systems, one to handle the roof runoff, the second larger one to handle all the parking lot runoff. All other utilities uh, are available on Pleasant Street. Uh, this section of Pleasant Street is not a state highway, so we don't have any state highway uh, curb cut permits uh, or use permits needed. The uh, the state highway layout ends a little bit further down closer to DW Field Park entrance. So we don't have any of those issues. As I said, all utilities are available uh, on Pleasant Street. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing your comments and getting this uh, vacant piece of property back up and running and, and building a, a, a good looking building for it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Scott. So I see it's gone through multiple rounds with tech review. The only question or clarification that we need is regarding the sidewalk elevations. Yep, the uh, we had a comment from uh, both from from the planning department and from the the city engineer uh, regarding just some clarification on the sidewalk. Uh, I'm just flipping through the pages. It's a whole lot of stuff to look at, Madam Chair, but right in that that bottom corner, there was just some grading discrepancies uh, that they wanted some clarification on. So we have all that shown on the plan now, uh, primarily at this driveway location. Thank you, Scott. 
And that also addresses the sidewalk issue? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Any questions from board members? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I do. Um, on the ZBA, I think, did the stipulation for cleaning up the front part of DW trickle down, or did that make it to the stipulations? It it did, Mr. Sweeney. It was part of the, the ZBA decision uh, okay. that that this area here between the DW field roadway and our property uh, where it's, it, it's kind of, it, it's not always maintained, I guess, at this point. So we're going to uh, take it upon ourselves to include that in our landscape maintenance program. Okay. And, and just curious uh, as to what the extent of that is going to be. Uh, let me just get back to that plan if i may mr sweeney but we don't have any as you can see all of the landscaping is proposed on our property all of the trees uh mm -hmm. and shrubs are on, on our property so that is uh it's mostly grass that would be mowed between our tree line in the uh in the driveway okay um scott would it be possible for uh kevin to show the uh renderings certainly i will stop kevin take it away and just FYI, Dr. Malik is also on the line with us. Very good. Right. Um, I'm hoping that everybody can see this, but uh, my name is Kevin Patton. I am the project architect and I'm with BKA Architects located in Brockton. And as Scott had described the property, it's uh, located along Pleasant Street and it borders uh, Pennsylvania Ave and uniquely DW Field. The project is designed for maximum flexibility, providing for multiple opportunities of varying tenant sizes from 1,100 square feet to 4,500 square feet. The primary building, uh, the larger of the two, that's about 14,000 square feet, will be occupied in part by the applicant Ace Dental up here along Pleasant Street. Uh, the second building, is designed uh, for up to two tenants. Uh, it's a little over 5,000 square feet. And the architecture is intended to relate to its location adjacent to DW Field by choosing the uh, wood tone uh, materials as well as stone along the base of the building. Uh, and also to the neighborhood by uh, using a lap siding for the predominant um, building material. And everything is uh, treated and applied in a contemporary manner, creating a uh, an upscale development, um, essentially at this gateway location to Brockton. That's a good looking building. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Better looking plan than mine as well. <laughs> Board members, any other questions? If not, we'll move to public comment. I, I do have another question. Um, as far as uh, blocking the box area that you have there on the street, yes, is that something? Is that something you're going to see the traffic commission for? Any extra signage or what are we doing there? That that's a fair question, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, as you know, the the ZBA chair in particular, it's a it's a kind of a pet peeve on a lot of these intersections, and we put it on the plan. But exactly how we go about spray painting those lines, I honestly don't know. So I, I would think it probably has to go to the traffic commission uh, to get their blessing on it. Okay. Well, they're probably, yeah, they'll probably send out the subcommittee at least uh, to check it out because you know, obviously we do have issues even in front of a fire station. So it would definitely yep. need some yes. signage. So we've, we've got time. We'll, we'll certainly take care of that. I'll reach out to the traffic commission and see if we can get on their agenda uh, to discuss it with them. Thank you, sir. All right, um, open up for public comment. If anybody from the public has uh, wants to comment on this project or ask a question, please use the raise your hand icon uh, at the bottom of your screen and we will uh, recognize you and um, open up your microphone. And Madam Chair, at this time, I do not have anyone indicating that they wish to speak. All right, thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve with standard conditions and uh, is it normal curb height? Is that what the uh, is that what we're looking for? Add correct curb elevations to the plan where it's needed. 
Okay, and, and correct elevations to the curb as needed. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, roll call. Marty Kroll? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Yolanda? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. folks. Have a good night. Thank Happy holidays, Dr. everyone. Thank, Thank you, Zoe. Thank you for your investment in the city. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Um, so, Rob, you want to uh, get back to the payroll or? Um... Was that the end of the cases? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, we have been informed, and, and just after all of our other emails have gone out, uh, we were informed that our payroll department is transitioning the um, uh, from a weekly to a biweekly payroll. So a weekly payroll gets submitted every week, which allows us to catch up with, um, assuming everybody has signed, uh, gets caught up with the um, uh, payroll in a, in a rather... Um, I don't want to say quick because nothing's quick in the city, but usually within a two week um, period by going to a biweekly payroll, um, the payroll is due the day before the planning board meeting. And so we have to then wait another two week cycle to submit. And so that's going to put us at about paychecks are going to show up probably about a month after um each meeting so i just wanted to let you know that ahead of time in case you're spending then, christmas money and then if we don't sign timely it's going to be a two months so um well that's more everybody sign could right. i could i make a suggestion that when it, my issue uh when i was late um it's because it was sent through adobe and it was kind of put in my junk mail. If it gets sent out, can we just maybe get a group text to the member so that at least we can check our mail? And I think it'd probably be, uh, might spam. be a quick fix. Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We will take care of that. And then if there's any stragglers, Rhoda, I'll help you chase them down. Just let me know. Ooh, dangerous. She will get you. And I'll back her up. Uh -huh. No good. All right, got an army here. And that's all I have. All right. Oh, thank you. Do it. Oh, do it, John. <laughs> Second. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is there anything need to be signed, Isaiah? We yeah. have so yeah. we yeah. Oh, yeah. we've 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 kind of been having a little difficulty getting things signed as well. Uh, some people come in, but things lag behind. So uh if everyone just make an effort to get up uh there a little bit quicker to get everything signed that would be i will be fantastic around the Thank quarter you. tomorrow so i will be there in the morning um probably about 9 30 okay Look forward i already time. received signatures from larry jim um it would be everybody else but larry and jim you guys are all set for this for this meeting for this for this round and we'll um from tonight's agenda will there be anything there's not anything to sign late uh next week right no, nothing. Okay. All right. Well, I'll see you in the morning then. Thank you. Good night. Well, actually, Happy holidays, sorry. everybody. Sorry, Road, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I will still need everyone to come in to sign if, um, you know, if we want the payroll to go a little faster. So, um, if well, we're gonna, one else can. We're, yes. We're going to. We're going to keep it as an electronic signature, but we're going to text them to make sure that they open up their email properly. Okay. So disregard the email I sent this afternoon. Okay, so we're still sending the Adobe. Yes. Yes, please. But we need to notify them. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't sign it, just chime in so we can help get you your sig get our signatures to you. Onto them down. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You had a motion, but not a second. Uh, second. All right. Roll call. Marty Kroll? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? 
Yes. Yolanda Spinola. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Good night. Um, last thing, happy holidays, everybody. Oh, yes. Happy holidays. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy it. Happy holidays. Merry, Merry Christmas, holidays. Merry everyone. Christmas, everybody. Oh, and actually, just real quick, we the, in case you didn't realize, I, everyone should know already, but we pushed the, the next January meeting back a day. It's on the third, not the second, just in case you still have it on your calendar as the old day. Just a reminder. January 3rd. Okay. January 3rd. Yep. Yes, That's it. Okay. Okay. Happay holidays. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Enjoy.